Good evening, everyone. Who's with us? I see Yui with us. Hello, Tzvi. Hello, Dave. Ben Hava. How are you, Tzvi Ben Hava? How are you feeling? Well, thanks, Dave. Thank God. Baruch Hashem. I'm so happy to hear that. First Thank of all, you. I'm happy to hear your voice, and I'm happy to hear that you're feeling better. Thanks, and please, Dave. God, you're going to start walking. Bezrat Hashem. Please, God, soon. Bezrat Hashem. Bezrat Hashem. Thanks, Who Dave. else today? Refua Shleima, who else with us? Thanks, I see oh, Jeffrey with us, Baruch Hashem. Yeah. Oh, Phil. Good evening. Phil, a long time. I missed you, Phil. Phil, <laughs> I just wanted, Phil, I just wanted to let you know that you know the Shaur on Shabbat. We started again on Shabbos afternoon. It's an hour before Shabbat in Yeshiva College. So I hope to see you with us, Phil. Thank you. Yo, thank you. Thank you. Thank well, you. I hope to see you again with us because you used to be a, a dominant member in that show. So I hope to see you again, Bezrat Hashem. Good. Thank you very much. Good. Just remember an hour before Shabbat, you just have to follow the, the, the schedule of Yeshiva College on Shabbat. It's usually in a big shoe. We do it in a big shoe. And um, I hope to see you again with us. Bezrat Hashem. Who else with us? Isaac's with us, Iva with us, and Anthony or El with us. I see more people joining. Good, good. So the subject of the show tonight is actually Arba'a Parshiot. I don't know how to say it. Philip, maybe you can help me. Jeffrey, maybe you can help me. How do you say Arba'a Parshiot? What it means, the Arba'a Parshiot, I'm talking about Parshat Shkalim, Zachor, Para, and Parashat Achodesh. I don't know how to mention it in English. There's a special uh, name to it, Philip? I think it's just the four special Shabbatot before Pesach. That's what they call it. The, no, before, so. before uh, Purim, before Purim we start. Yes. Okay, so they Fair call enough. it uh, Arba'a the four special parashot. Oh, Marky with us. Now I we can drop. start. Now that now everyone... Start. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. Okay, so uh, you call it the four special Shabbos, you call it. Am I right, uh, yeah. Philip? Yeah, let me see. just look it up and see if there's... I see Stephen with us. Stephen, maybe you can help us. What did they call the Arba'a Parshiot when I'm talking about Parashat Shkalim, Parashat Zachor? And Parashat Para and Parashat Achodesh. How do you? I'm uh, not sure. I'm, I'm going to just check. I'll, I'll, I'll just check it out. I'll let you know now. Now. I don't know how it's called. Anyway, I, I call it the four parshiot. Yeah. We spoke about it once before, and I would like uh, just to refresh because this coming Shabbos we're gonna be'ezrat Hashem. We're gonna read Parashat Shkalim, and I'm gonna explain. What are we reading? Why are we reading Dafkados Parshiot? I'm going to bring the source for it, um, the order, Be'ezrat Hashem, and also to explain certain minhagim. Okay, then there is a Shabbat Afsaka. Shabbat Afsaka is a Shabbos that we have a break, that we don't read those special uh, Parshiot, that we don't read it. And then who's obligated for certain thing of them in Hagin? And Be'ezrat Hashem, Na'asev Natsliah, Ve'ashem, Alenu Berahamav Yarviah. I would like Amen. to delegate the Shi'ur in memory of Esther Kaden Bat Ketia, Mordechai Ben Rahma, Rav Avram Hayim Ben Eliezer Yaakov, Tamar Bat Ze'ava, Shulamit Bat Avram Eliezer Yaakov, Salomon Ben Faha, Dvorah Rut Bat Bela, Shosha Blima Bat Mordechai Betzalel, Miriam Bat Moshe, Malka Regina Bat Joya, Veketi Gurdia Bat Parha. In memory of them, that please God, that Sheol will uplift their soul in heaven. Now, also, I would like to delegate the Sheol in health of Leor Bat Miriam and Ashenaji Ben Farha, Harav Avraham Ben Marima, Rav Shlomo Yuda Ben Dalia, Rav Moshe Ben Devora. הרב משה בן בהיה בת יד, דבורה בת אסתר, חיה מרים בת רחל, אורנה בלומה בת מרים, שינה קיילה בת חנה, מרדכי דוד בן לאה, צבי בן חווה, ברוך בן שרה, 
שמואל מאיר, שמואל מאיר בן שושה בלימה, מרים בת זלדה ליבה, משה אברהם בן חן אריבה, חיה ציפורה בת רחל, איילה עדן בת רבקה, וטובה ליבה בת רחל. So בעזרת השם נעשה ונצליח והשם עלינו ברחמיו ירוויח. I'm going to mute everyone and we're going to start the show. Okay, so we explained that the show is ארבעה פרשיות and uh, I didn't get so far what is it called, so let's use what Philip called it, the special four פרשיות that we're adding up on a Shabbos just before פרשת, uh, before ראש חודש אדר. Hazal constitute for us to read extra four parashot, okay, except the parashat ha-shavua that we read, above it, that means the kriyat of the shvi'i, okay, what we call it, it's going to be before the Shabbos of Rosh Chodesh Adar, the Shabbos before Rosh Chodesh Adar, until Rosh Chodesh Nisan. Those are the four parashot. What are they? The first parasha that we're going to read, and that's going to read this coming Shabbos, because Rosh Chodesh Adar, it's going to fall on next week, Monday night, Tuesday, Wednesday, two days. Okay? So before that, on this coming Shabbos, we're going to read Parashat Shkalim. We'll explain what is it speaking about. The second parasha that we're going to read is Parashat Zachor. After that, after Parashat Zachor, we have Parashat Para, then we have Parashat Achodesh. Those are the four parashiot. Where is the source for it that Hazal constitutes for us? So there is two sources for it. The first one comes from the Mishnah in Masechet Megillah, in chapter 3, Mishnah Dalet. There they explain that, I just said quickly, Rosh Chodesh Adar Shehal Liyot, בשבת קוראים פרשת שקלים, אוקיי? Okay? And then he continue, בשנייה זכור, בשלישית פרה אדומה, and ברביעית פרשת החודש, החודש הזה לכם ראש חודשים. And also it's brought in the Gemara in מסכת, eh, מסכת מגילה, in page 2941, four line before the end of the page, חז"ל tell us where They, what we have to do about the obligation that we have to read about the four parashiot. So the source to it come already around 2,700 years ago, if not more, okay? So we see from here that it's an ancient custom to read those special four parashiot. Now, what do we do? In a parsha, uh, in a Shabbos before Rosh Chodesh Adar, Okay, we read Parashat Shkalim, like this year, that we have one Adar. What's happened in the leap year? In the leap year, we read Parashat Shkalim before, okay, before Rosh Chodesh Adar Bet, the second Adar. Before Adar Bet, we read Parashat Shkalim. That means in the leap year, we don't read before first Adar, only after, before Adar bit. What's happened if uh, uh, the Shabbos before, okay, that Rosh Chodesh fall on the Shabbos, what's happened on that? What do we do? We take actually three Sifre Torah. The first one we read Parashat Shavua. Second one we read, okay, Parashat, normal Parashat that we read for Rosh Chodesh, okay? And the third book, we read Parashat of Shkalim or Parashat uh, Zachor, etc. Okay? If it's full. Okay. I would like to move on and I would like to speak about the Parashiot. What does it mean? The order of the Parashiot. <clears throat> so this coming Shabbos, it's called, beside that, we gonna read the normal uh, parsha, we gonna read Parashat Shkalim. Parashat Shkalim, it's a parsha that can be found in a book of Shmot. The parsha is Parashat Kitisa. In chapter 30, this verse 11 to verse 16. 11 to 16, okay? And the main reason 
that we read before Rosh Chodesh Adar, Parashat Shkalim. Shkalim, it means what we call shekel, what we call machatzit shekel. Remember that, okay? It speak about the uh, value of the money, uh -huh, value of the currency. That's what it means, machatzit shekel. I will explain everything just now. What does it mean? And why do we read it? So the main reason that we read Parashat Shkalim before Rosh Chodesh Adam, it's to remind the Jewish people, okay? To give the donation of a half a shekel to Bet Amikdash. When the time that Bet Amikdash was exist, okay? They used to take Mahatita Shekel. With that Mahatita Shekel that everyone used to give, they used to buy the public sacrifice that they used to sacrifice on a month of Nisan. Remember, in a month of Nisan, there's a lot of sacrifice. So with Mahatita Shekel, with a half a shekel that every Jewish person used to bring to Bet Amikdash, but that money, they used to collect it and they used to buy sacrifice for the month of Nisan. Okay, that's when Bet Amikdash was exist. Today, although that Bet Amikdash not exist, we still doing that custom, okay, to give Mahatzit shekel. the home that we're reading is to remind us to do it, but we still given Mahatzit shekel. Why do we give Mahatzit shekel? So the, the, the Mishnah Brura, yes, the Mishnah Brura, Taf, Taf, eh, where is it? Taf Resh Pei Hei, that mean, 685, the first Mishnah, the first Mishnah there, that uh, the should the, the, the Hafez Chaim say, because he wrote the Mishnah Brura, he say that he's still accustomed to give Mahatita Shekel. He said that he's still accustomed to read number one about Mahatita Shekel, but, but it's also to give the Mahatita Shekel. Okay. What the Haftarah that we read? Because after that, we also have to read the Haftarah. Because Shvi'i, it's Shabbat Shkalim. We read Parashat Shkalim. So the Haftarah of Parashat Shkalim that we're gonna read is in the book of Kings. Kings have two volume. In Kings 2, volume two, chapter 11. That's the Haftarah, just for us to understand. So now we have to understand that Mahatzita Shekel, it's in memory of the sacrifice when Bet Amikdash used to be exist, okay, to buy all the public sacrifice that they used to sacrifice in a month of Nisan. So a month before when Bet Amikdash was exist, they used to collect that money, the half a shekel, that's the, the value of the half of the currency that called shekel, Later on in the, in the show, we'll explain also the value of that money today. And with that, used to buy the public sacrifice. That's the first parasha that's called Parashat Shkalim. Parashat Shkalim, remember this coming Shabbos. Okay, what is the second uh, parasha? The second parasha that we're gonna read is Parashat Zachor. What is Parashat Zachor? First of all, where do we find Parashat Zachor? Parashat Zachor, it's a, in a book of Sefer Dvarim, Parashat Kitice in chapter 25, verses 17 until 19. And there it says, et asher asa lecha Amalek. What is Parashat Zechor? That we have to remember that Amalek came and fight with the Jewish people after the splitting of the sea. When is the time of reading that parasha? The time of reading that Pasha, it's before the festival of Purim. Before the festival of Purim, we obligate to read Parashat Zachor that speak about that Amalek came and what he wanted to fight with the Jewish people. And Hazal explained that one of the first, the, one of the main thing that we're reading it, that we have to remember that we have a mitzvah, a mitzvah, okay? A positive command from the Torah to destroy the descendants of Amalek, okay? 
Why Dafka we read it before Purim? Because Haman, Harasha, was from descendants of who? Of Amalek, Hama, Haman Agagi. Okay, so he was from descendants of Amalek. Okay, so that's what we have to do, to do, to read. When I said to do, to read Parashat Zachor before the festival of Purim. Okay, now we have to understand that there is a mahloket amongst the, the poskim, okay? That most of the Rishonim, the Rishonim is those that lived around the 11th century, okay? And uh, most of the Ahronim, Ahronim is from the 14th century, okay? 16th century, let's be more accurate, 15th, 15th, 16th century, that they say that Parashat Zachor, it's an obligation to read it from the Torah. Where do they come to it? Because it's in the Torah that we mentioned in Parashat Kitetzel HaMilchama, it said there, Zachor et asher asa lecha amalek betzitcha me'eret mitzrayim, okay? That when you left Egypt, okay? Amalek come and fight with you. So according to most of the Rishonim, and most of the Ahronim, the reading of Parashat Zachor, it's an obligation from the Torah, mitzvat de oraita. Okay, now here's the thing that everyone have to remember. Parashat Zachor, everyone have to listen to it according to the tropes that he get used to. That means a Sfaradi obligated to listen to Parashat Zachor and a Sfaradi trope. Ashkenazim, obviously, and Ashkenazi trope. The Yemenite and the Yemenite tropes. Because if you didn't read, hear it, and you're on trope, and you didn't understand, it's some of the poskim consider it like you didn't film it's Vata Semina Torah. So we see from here how strict and how important is it to listen to Parashat Zachor that speak about that we obligate to remember what Amalek done to us when we left Egypt. The Haftarah of Parashat Zachor, the Haftarah of Parashat Zachor actually can be found in the book of the prophet Shmuel. Shmuel, we have again two volumes, Shmuel Aleph and Shmuel Bet. The Parashat, the Haftarah that we're going to read in Parashat Zachor, it's from the book of Shmuel, volume one, in chapter 15, okay, there it's speaking about when Shaul HaMelech, the King Shaul, the first king that we have in the land of Eretz Israel, because the first king that we have is obviously Moshe Rabbeinu, but the first king that we have in Eretz Israel was Shaul HaMelech. When he been commanded by Akadosh Baruch Hu that told the prophet Samuel, to go to tell the king, Shaul, to kill who? Amalek, at Agag, Melech Amalek. That means Hagag was the king of Amalek. There he didn't kill it, as I'll explain that he wanted to bring it. And when they put it in captivity, he had a physical relationship with a woman and she fell pregnant. And from that came the rest of the descendants of Amalek. Although later on, he killed Amalek. He chopped his head, they shechted him. Because that he didn't fulfill that command, Hazal explained, and the prophet in Prophet uh, Samuel, volume one, it's explained that he lost his kingdom because he didn't obey the order of Akadosh Baruch Hu to King Amalek. And that we suffering until today. Hazal explained that today, because we don't know who's the descendants of Amalek, we cannot fulfill this mitzvah. So this mitzvah is very difficult to fulfill today. I know that it's a positive command from the Torah. We can't fulfill it because we don't know who's Amalek. Nachon that the Gaon Mivilna, Rabbi Eliyahu Mivilna, that born 
around 303 years ago, he said that if you want to know who's Amalek, those that start a war with the Jewish people, you must know that they are Amalekim. So we see that some of our cousins, they are Amalekim because they cause all the problem in Eretz Israel. We see what's happening for the tragedy that we have the last two Shabbatot, the last two Friday, and this Friday, two, a mother lost, number one, two kids and a, and a husband in the ICU. So that's our cousin that we're trying to make peace with. Okay, the third Pasha that we're gonna read, Rabotai, that's gonna be Parashat Para. What it mean, Parashat Para? The law of Parashat Para Aduma, the law of the red heifer. Where can it find? That can be found in a book in Sefer Bamidbar, in Parashat Hukat. Okay, there in chapter 19, verse one to 22, here we see that it's quite a long reading. The time of reading Parashat Hukat, it's the week before we read uh, Parashat Hodesh. Parashat Hodesh, okay, we read before Rosh Hodesh Nisan. So Parashat Para, we read exactly a week before, okay? And we have to understand that the main reason that we're reading Parashat Para, why do we read Parashat? the red heifer, because there in those verses, the Torah explained to us how to purify, how a person has to purify himself, okay? So he can sacrifice Korban Pesach. That means that when the time of Bet Amikdash, please God, will come, we can bring Korban Pesach. So we have to learn and a time before that, that Bet Amikdash was exist, is to, to remind people that they have to prepare themselves and how to prepare themselves to purify themselves that they can do Korban Pesach. Okay? So we learn from here that Parashat Para, when Bet Amikdash was exist, it's to prepare those to be ready for sacrificing what? Korban a Pesach. Okay, now let's move on. Hazal explained that there is certain of the poskin, and I say Hazal, it's certain of the poskin, and I mentioned the name, is Arosh Rabbein Hosher, Aritba, Rabbi Yom Tov Ben Avraham, Rabbi Uta Hasid, listen to that. Those the main three, that poskin, that parashat paraduma, it's also obligation from to read it, to read that parsha. It's obligation from the Torah. That means mitzvah doraita, ado, ado, and here's the most important: that most of the poskim doesn't agree with that opinion. So parashat para, most of the poskim say no. It's not obligation from the Torah. It's not like parashat zachor that you have to make sure and you have to focus that you have to read it, okay? Because Parashat Zachor, everyone agree, most of the poskim agree, that's from the Torah. What have Tara that we have to read for Parashat Para? So Parashat Para, okay, the, the Hafta of Parashat Para, it's from the book of Yehezkel, the prophet Yehezkel in chapter 36, okay? There he speak about the story of Paraduma, the story of the purification of the Jewish people. That's the main reason. Now, we're gonna speak about the fourth parsha. The fourth parsha that we have to read is Parashat Ahodesh. When we read Parashat Ahodesh, what does it mean Parashat Ahodesh? Is Parashat Ahodesh, first of all, it's come from Sefer Shemot in uh, Parashat Bo that we read in chapter 12, verse, I think, one until 20. And there it says, Ahodesh Azeh Lachem Rosh Chodashim. Okay, what does it mean? First of all, Parashat Ahodesh we read before, before Rosh Chodesh Nisan. We have to understand that. Before Rosh Chodesh Nisan. 
אוקיי? If it's full on a Shabbos, אוקיי? That Rosh Chodesh full on a Shabbos, we read it on Shabbos. And by. Now, we have to understand that the main reason for reading Parashat HaChodesh. Why do we read Parashat HaChodesh? So it's number one, Hazal constitutes for us this. It's to explain to us that, number one, to remind us that Rosh Chodesh Nisan coming. In Rosh Chodesh Nisan, we have the festival of Pesach. That means that we have to prepare ourselves to read the law, the law of Pesach, because there is a lot of law. When Pesach comes, full of law. There is Ilchot HaPesach, the, the, the Shulchan Aruch Paskin, that Shloshim Yom Kodem HaPesach, that means 30 days before the Pesach, a person should start study Ilchot HaPesach. That means from Purim, straight after Purim, you have to start learning the Ilchot HaPesach to know all the law that applicable for Pesach, to know what to do on Pesach. So Hazal constitute that the Shabbos before Rosh Chodesh of Pesach, or if Rosh Chodesh of, when I say Rosh Chodesh of Pesach, that means Rosh Chodesh Nisan, that before Rosh Chodesh Nisan, or if Rosh Chodesh of Nisan fall on a Shabbos, you will be obligated to read Parashat HaChodesh, okay? The after of Parashat HaChodesh can be found again in a prophet, in a book of the prophet Yehezkel in chapter 45, okay? So those are the four parashiyot. Now I would like to speak about certain minhagim that we have, certain minhag, that custom that we have to do. Okay, what do we do? First of all, on Shabbatot, on those Shabbatot, okay, we don't say Avarahamim. We don't say Avarahamim. Also, we don't do Haskarat Neshamot. We don't do Haskarat Neshamot before Musa. That's to the Ashkenazim. The Sephardim do Haskarat Neshamot. What's happening in Minha of Shabbos? In Minha of Shabbos, we say Tzid Katcha, except if one of those parashiyot fall on Rosh Hodesh himself, then we don't say Tzid Katcha. Now, you remember that I explained earlier there is Shabbat Afsaka. What is Shabbat Afsaka? Shabbat Afsaka, it's a Shabbos that we have a break that we don't read any one of those parsha. That means we read the normal parsha to Shavuot. When is it usually happen? That parsha usually happen and most of the time it's the Shabbos after you read Parashat Shkalim. And what's happening? Because on that Shabbos, like for example, this, this year, it worked beautifully. This coming Shabbos, we're gonna read Parashat Shkalim. We have Parashat Shkalim, okay? And, uh, and uh, in the following Shabbos, we have a break. We need, we read the normal Parashat Shavua. Let me just check, yeah. Because this, this coming Shabbos is Parashat Mishpatim. Parashat Mishpatim, we read, we read Parashat Shkalim. Next Shabbos, it's Parashat Turuma. We read only Parashat Turuma. So that's called Shabbat uh, Hafsaka. okay? Sometimes it's happened that Shabbat Hafsaka happened between Parashat Zachor and Parashat, and Parashat Para. Okay, sometimes it doesn't happen often. Now we have to understand about certain minhagim that I want to speak. And I want to speak about the minhag of Mahatita Shekel. What is Mahatita Shekel that I explained earlier? And I said that I'm going to explain. What is Mahatita Shekel? So we explained that Mahatita Shekel was that they used to remind the people, okay, earlier before the months of Adar, that they have to bring a half a shekel to Beta Mikdash. And with that money that they used to collect is to buy the public sacrifices. That's when Beta Mikdash was exist. Why are we in our time, what do we do? And we know that we give a, a Mahatita shekel. So there's different opinion to it. 
first of all, we have to understand where is that minag start that today that Bet Amikdash not exist, we still have to give Mahatit Hashem. So this minha come by the Mordechi. Who was the Mordechi? Mordechi, you quite often heard about him. He wrote commentary on a Gemara. Who was he? He was Rabbi Mordechai ben Hillel. Rabbi Mordechai ben Hillel, he was one of the Rishonim. He born around 773 years ago. Okay. And Hazal, in any, sorry, in his commentary, uh, on a Gemara and Masechet Megillah, there he brings that there is a custom, although that Bet does not exist, uh, uh, to bring Mahatzit Shekel, to give Mahatzit Shekel. That's the Mordechi. And Hazal, uh, the, 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 the Mefarshim, not Hazal, the Mefarshim explain that that's custom, it's an ancient custom, and actually it started with the Ashkenazim. But they say that today, although that Bet Amikdash you don't not exist, you take that money and you give Mahatit Shekel. And with that, you give it, we'll see now who we have to give it, okay? Who we obligate to give it, and we'll see what is it say and how much, what's the value. The dish custom entered to the Sephardim around, around plus minus around 100 years ago. It's not old black as the Ashkenazim kept it. Who brought it first? Who brought this custom? So this custom was by Rabbi Haim Palaji and the Kafa Haim. Kafa Haim is a book of Alachot that been written by Rabbi Yaakov Moshe Sofer, Rabbi Yaakov Haim Sofer, Sofi. sorry, Rabbi Yaakov Haim Sofer. Rabbi Yaakov Haim Sofer wrote the book Kafa Haim, he born around 158 years ago in Baghdad, in Iraq. He was one of the students of the Benish Hai, Rabbi Yosef Hai. And in his book, in, in uh, chapter 692, uh, he said that uh, uh, it's a custom, he bring the sword that in a city of uh, Turkey, in a city of in a city of Izmir in Turkey, they used to give Mahatita Shekel. So that they talking about plus minus around 100, 150 years ago. Okay. The Mishnah Bura, okay, in Siman 692, they say that when is the appropriate time to give the Mahatita Shekel? So they say the Mahatita Shekel, the best time to give it, okay? It's on the fast of Tanita still, listen to that. Why? Because on that day we fasting and we also giving tzedakah, okay? That it's gonna do the best kind of fasting and tzedakah together, it's to do a tournament. So that's the best time. That's the Mishnah Baruah, the Ramah, the Rama is Rabbi Moshe Iserlish. Rabbi Moshe Iserlish, that he wrote the, 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 the Mishnah Burura, although he didn't write it, wrote it the Hafez Chaim, but he bring a lot in the name of the Rama, Rabbi Moshe Iserlish. Rabbi Moshe Iserlish, born in the city of Krakow in Poland. He born around 494 years ago. He was the chief rabbi of Krakow. The chief rabbi, when we say chief rabbi, and it's like the chief rabbi of Israel at the moment, it's more of a lachakli authority. So the Rama was the main or the head of the authority for the Ashkenazim, okay? And he wrote in a Mishnah Bura in uh, uh, 692, again, that it's common to give three coins of the normal, of the half of the normal currency. Mahatita shekel, Mahatita is a half. Shekel, it was in Israel's shekel, it's to give a half of it, okay? So for example, let's take South Africa. The common thing, let's say it's a ram, although to give three 
coin of 50 cents, it's actually a joke. So it's more common to give three coin of five ren, okay? If people can give more, obviously it's more, okay? Of the normal currency. That's the custom of the Ashkenazi. The custom of the Sfadi completely different because the Sfadi say that the, val the value of Mahatsita Shekel is the value of 9.5 gram to 10 gram of pure silver. So if you take that, that's, if I'm not mistaken, I don't know, plus minus, what is it? But I have a silver, I think that the Mahatita Shekel, if I'm not mistaken, I think that it's 80, 80 Ren, 90 Ren. I'm not sure exactly. I'm not familiar with the value of the pure silver. So according to the Sfadim, you have to give the value of 9.5 to 10 gram of pure silver. To who to give that money? Here I come. So the Rama Paskin in uh, in uh, Mishnah Brura, Tav Tzadik Resh Dalet, that means 694. He said, first of all, who have to give it? Okay, there is, there is different opinion here. So the Rama say that every male from the age of 20, okay, and up have to give it. That's the Rama. There is other opinion that people even from the age of bar mitzvah obligate to give it, male from the age of bar mitzvah. Other opinion that more strict that every member of the house have to give mahatsit shekel. But obviously if they can afford it. Who to give that money? Here come the main question. So in a time of Bet Amikdash, they used to take that money and we explained that with that money they used to go, they, they used to buy the public sacrifice. But today that we don't have Bet Amikdash and these customs still exist. Sorry, what you should do. So most of the post say that it's good to take that money and to give it to Talmidei Hachamim Anim. What it's mean, Talmidei Hachamim Anim? That means that there is Talmid Hacham that sits and study Torah all day and he is living in poverty. It's the best to give it to him. Also, the Mefarshim explain that when you give Mahatsit Shekel, when you give that money, you should not take it from your Maaser that you give. Because we obligate to give a tzedakah every month. Everyone is obligated to give its tzedakah. Maaser is above the tzedakah. Okay, there is a different money. There is tzedakah that you have to give every money. Okay, that's 10%. Okay, some people say 20%, okay? And then you have Maaser. Maaser, it's not an obligation. Maaser is a personal decision. Come the post and say, should we take that money that we give Maaser, that mean can, if that can be the Mahatita Shekel, most of the opinions say, preferably not to take it, okay? Because if you look, if you take, let's call it three coin or five brand, it's really not a lot, 15 brand, it's nothing. Let's round it to 30 rand, okay? I think that everyone can afford to give 30 rand. It's not here, it's not there. 30 rand, I don't think that you can even buy a meal today. You know what I'm saying? So preferably that to give the Mahatita Shekel, not from the master. Person should not, rather not give it from his master, obviously definitely not from his tzedakah. That's mean the mahatita shekel should be over and above the tzedakah and the master that you give. I hope that I covered all the, the, the thing that belong to those four parashiot. I hope that you understand. Um, I'm gonna give now time for question that Be'ezrat Hashem, I'm gonna try and try and answer for your question, Be'ezrat Hashem. Bechavod, um, those that have question, please unmute yourself. And I'll, I'll I'll answer. Answer. It's Anthony, how are you? Erev Tov, Antonio. How are you? Thanks. Right, thanks, how are you? Yom Yom, Baruch Hashem. Ken, Antonio, Ken. Parashat HaChodesh, 
falls on Rosh Chodesh Nisan, and it's Shabbos. We take out three Torahs. Is that right? We take yeah, out three Torahs. If it's fall on Rosh Chodesh, if it's fall on Shabbat. Yes. So three, what do we read? We read the normal Parshat HaShavua that we have to read. We read the Parsha that we read about Rosh Chodesh, that we usually read Rosh Chodesh. Yes. And then the third book is Parashat HaChodesh. That means HaChodesh Hazel Lachem Rosh Chodeshim. That speak about Nisan. What is it say a Rosh? And why is it called Parashat HaChodesh? HaChodesh Hazel Lachem Rosh Chodeshim. Because Nisan, the month of Nisan, considered the first month, the first month, of all the months. He's the first man when he's yeah. come to the man. Okay. Okay. Thanks very much. The seller. Pleasure. Pleasure. Any other question? Robotai yeah. Bechavo. If you want to ask about it. Yes, Rob. I'd like to ask a question. Um, oh, Shavua Tov. <laughs> How, are you, How are you, Jeffrey? How are you? <laughs> Still kicking. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> Rav, this um, you gave you explained who brings half a shekel, and it, there's different opinions of different age groups, what have you. But wouldn't it be beholden for every Jew? Because isn't it a, isn't it a, a, a connection between the half a shekel of counting the Jewish people? at that time, and now we're bringing half a shekel. Is there not a connection between that? No. So, uh, I'll tell you what's the difference between them. Half a shekel that they've done, it's the sense to count how many poor war, how many people was from the age of 20 to the age of 60, you remember? Yes, yes, that, that's really, why it's the 20 okay, up so one of the opinions. One, that's one of the opinions from the, from the age of 20. But, the the rest didn't have to give like people that was below the age of 20 was no obligation to give mahatsit shekel to count the sense of the jewish people the people that was over and above the age of 60 didn't have obligation because yes. the obligation was from the age of 20 to the age of 60 to work it out that there is 600,000 male from the age of 20 to the age of 60. Here, a door that it's called Mahatita Shekel, the main reason that they don't want to count them, because we don't count human beings. From here, we explain in the Shorim of Parashat Shavua that it's no good to count, like people want to know if there is a minion. So it's usually some people say one, two, three. No, you must not do that. And we learned that from David Amelech. David Amelech tells us that you should not count people. Because then you bring in the evil eye and it can cause a death. So what they do? HaKadosh Baruch Hu command Moshe Rabbeinu, take a half a shekel and count the half shekel. How many there is? There is a hundred half shekel? You know, there is hundred male. Okay, just for example. But here we say that you have to give what? A half a shekel. For what? Oh. To buy the sacrifice. Nahon? Mm -hmm. So it's mainly for the age of 20 to the age of 60. Do you understand yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Yes. And those sacrifices was for what? To do a toyment. Cool. Okay. And in the time, the inauguration of the tabernacle, okay, for the first 12 days, okay, they brought what? Each one brought his own each head of the tribe, sorry, each yes. one, when I say each one, each head of the tribe brought his own sacrifices. Okay? That's when the inauguration was. And then in the months of Nisan, they used to bring their sacrifices. Beseda? Yes, yes. You yes. understand? Yeah. Are you, also, are you saying then, up to the age of 20, if up to the age of 20, they didn't have to bring a chatsi shekel because they didn't have to atone. They weren't responsible for it? No, 
or is it from over because 20? Because Hazal tells us that, that mita bide shamayim only from the age of 20 onwards. And that's yeah. why they have to bring. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. The punishment of death, mita bide shamayim. Yeah. Mita bide shamayim is the punishment of death from heaven. Uh, the seven. The seven. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Please. Any other question, Rabotai, regarding the four parshiot, if you have any other question? No. I see that there is no more question regarding that. I hope that I explain everything clearly. So, Be'ezrat Hashem, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu will give us the merit that, first of all, to send us Mashiach Titkenu. And when the Mashiach Titkenu is going to come speedily in our days, he gonna build Bet Mikdash. And if he go on to build Bet Mikdash, then we all have to bring number one, sacrifices, number two, to do paraduma, to purify us. And why? Because we all at the moment consider me'emetim. What it means, me'emetim? That inevitably each one of us got in, involved with the seas or was in a cemetery, and we all involved what we call with the tuma, the impurity of the death. And that purity, and that's kind of a tuma, the impurity, it's very difficult. When I say difficult, I'm talking about spiritual for the neshama. And that, that's what doesn't allow us to understand a lot in the Torah. So when the Mashiach come, and he'll do the 10 red heifer, the paradigma, we explain how to do that. He's gonna mix it with the water and then he's gonna sprinkle on us and suddenly we're all gonna be pure. Our mind gonna be completely different. We're not gonna forget things. Everything that we learn, we're gonna remember. So, Be'ezrat Hashem, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu will send Mashiach Tzitkenu speedily in our days and we're gonna do paradigma. We continue to do Mahatita Shekel to give money for the sacrifice. Then, obviously, as Hazal said, that this Latid Lavo Shne Hagim will never going to be cancelled. It's Purim and Hanukkah. Those two festivals, like those who are not going to cancel, there is on a Pshat of the Dvarim, there is more on a depth. As Rat Hashem will explain. Uh, this coming Thursday, we're going to do a show again on Zoom, as usual. On Shabbos, we're going to do a show on the, the same Parshat Shavua, just in depth. Okay, in depth, we bring different ideas, more in depth, as you people experience those that come to the show. In. Next week, Be'ezrat Hashem, I'm going to start with Purim. And Be'ezrat Hashem, next Sunday, if there is no load shedding, Be'ezrat Hashem shouldn't be load shedding, we'll explain the custom of human tassel. Many of us think that the shape of the human tassel, that triangle, that was the ears of a man. No, <laughs> I heard that many people ask me, Rabbi, is the ear of a man was a triangle? I said, not at all. <laughs> no, there's a different. And you know, I decide to make a show on it. And actually, I'm going to bring the pshat and the remes on it. And you'll see that the remes actually have a sword on it. Why do we eat homentasen on Pesach? Why dafka homentasen? Why uh, white nose? Why not the nose of a man? Why not the lips of a man? I don't know. Whatever. The eyes of a man. I don't know what you want to call it. Why not the ears of a man? That they call it homentasi. You know what I'm saying? So Be'ezrat Hashem, where this, I'm preparing now, show on it, on, on all different, to try to cover the idea of homentasi and how's that applicable to us. And I will connect it, Be'ezrat Hashem, to the festival of Purim. In the meantime, I would like to take the opportunity to wish each one of you individually a beautiful week. You should all have a beautiful week. Those of you that need refuah shlema, that Akadosh Baruch Hu send you full recovery to each one of you full recovery. And Be'ezrat Hashem, Akadosh Baruch Hu will give us a beautiful weekend. Thank you for joining us. 
and look after yourself. We'll be in touch this coming Thursday, Be'ezrat Hashem, on Zoom. Have a good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.